and it's not able to really produce a strong out. I'm seeing Sarah's heart. You know what it looks like to me, Tracy? It looks like when children in the old days did not have, they didn't have, you know, the fancy basketballs and everything. They used to play with just a sheep's bladder. They used to play with just a cow's, a cow's stomach. They would take that thing and they would let it dry in the sun and then they would put air in it and then they would tie it with a bit of string and that would be their ball. That's, those are the first old, old balls. They would take, or sometimes they would take the dried leather and just put, you know, put air into it from the forge or something like that, pump air into it and then tie it and then say that's their ball and they would kick it around until obviously the air went out and then it would be very flat and floppy. That's how I'm seeing this woman's heart in her chest. It was a little bit flat. It was a little bit floppy because they had been waiting on that promise for 25 years. But God says that she excelled herself in the natural movements and momentums of a wife. But when it came to stepping into the spiritual realm to believe for that baby that she always wanted, Sarah was unable to do it. And she mocked. God is not going to tolerate this mockery. This last day's mockery is the trademark of the end times. This last day's mockery is the trademark of disrespect towards the word of God and also the personage of God and the Lord says Tracy that he is not going to accept it anymore when people mock they are going to they are going to suffer all kinds of repercussions up to and including losing their life it's going to be possible for a person to lose their their life it's going to be possible for a person to lose their fertility just the way michael lost her fertility for mocking at david when he was dancing before the lord god is not going to tolerate it god is going to take good care of us in this kingdom god is going to take good care of his people we are not going to be starving when everyone else is starving we are not going to be kept under fully exposed to the elements just because the wicked they are wicked in every nation. They don't look wicked. They look like ordinary people. But the Lord said that the goodness of God and the light of this truth is not in them. Their hearts are dark. Their understanding is dark. They're the ones who are primarily going to be suffering the very rough edge of judgment. But God is going to make sure that when his people are perhaps wandering, they're going to come up against these homes that have been prepared, that have everything in them. Praise the Lord. These homes where people have prepped, people have built all kinds of underground basement bunker um, safety latches and things like that. They've put so much food into storage. They have candles, they have flour, they have grinding mills, they have so much stuff. But the one thing they did not do was put their faith in God. So I'm telling you that when bad announcements begin to happen in the United States, I'm talking about fire drills. That fire drill announcement is going to start going off because they're going to see that somehow there's going to be a nuclear threat here, a nuclear threat there. Americans better get used to the fact that they they're going to start having, um, what's it called? Nuclear drills, nuclear drills, nuclear drills. People are going to start hearing that, that thing that goes in the towns. And then you're going to have to run and then you get to the shelter and it turns out it's not real. It's a drill, but you don't dare not go when you hear it because one day it's going to be real incoming missile fire from another country incoming missile fire detected towards the eastern seaboard new york city is going to get bombed and nuked out of existence that place is going to be a city on fire new york is going to sustain so many hits that is going to be unrecognizable it's going to be one of the earliest casualties in the u.s war it's going to be one of the first casualties because it is so iconic but god says the monuments of new york city will be all made to bow and the lord himself will humble that proud city because they have such a loud tongue in the end times they always have something to say when god is speaking they always have something to say when the lord is talking new york city you are so disrespectful you are like a goat in the presence of the lord you buck up your heels and you even attempt to kick at god when he is seated on his mighty throne and for that you will be humbled down to the dust mystery babylon the city city and the nation that is the united states of america god is going to judge this country so harshly that i'm telling you you will have to have a heart of bricks to be able to tolerate what will look like criminal injustice against the american people god says that american people are going to feel so hard done by they will moan and they will murmur and they will complain against god so greatly and in this he says you are nothing like nineveh you claim 
that is your nature, but there is absolutely no heart of repentance in this country. There is no desire to bur- to bow down as one man and say, Lord, we are sorry. There is no desire to humble ourselves and bow down before the Lord and say, Lord, we are so sorry for what we have done. We repent of our sins. Lord, we accept the things that you have said about us wholeheartedly. We do not try to make any excuse. We cannot in good faith, oh Lord, justify ourselves before you because we are absolutely guilty. Not only have we said what you, have we done what you said, we are guilty even of things unnamed. There are sins that should not be named among men and people do these things. People do these things, nasty things that even now, as I'm seeing it, I don't feel like discussing it. I don't feel like using my mouth to say it. The things that men do with their bodily substances, the places that they put their physical substances when others do not know that they have put it there. Truly people should be punished with 25 life sentences for what I see these men doing. They put it into cups and they take it into shared workplaces and they put it into shared communal foods that people are having in the offices. And that's all I'm going to say. They are guilty of doing that. They are guilty of putting it even into kids lunches, sick, unhinged, twisted, unnatural, perverted beasts walking around it as men. This is what they do. This is the thing that I'm seeing with my eyes right now, that they take it into communal spaces and they delight in introducing it into the group, the group coffee or the group food source, and then watching with this demonic satisfaction inside them as others come and partake without knowing this is the place that we live. This is where we are. This is what the eye of God can see a propos of nothing, which means out of the blue, without prompting, the Lord can show something like this. This is what we are doing in this country. And then we will say that we are good people here. There is nothing to commend this nation as a collective before Jesus Christ, that we have a case to argue that there should not be destruction and that there should not be annihilation. And so of course, when God is going to bring the reign of his judgment, such a harsh and such a burning rain, it will be such a harsh and a burning rain for the things that go on in private here. God is not going to tolerate for the church to be done down like this anymore because the time is not yet come for the church to close its doors. The era is soon, but the Holy Spirit is saying it's not yet. And when people are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, when people are sharing the word of God, when people are teaching the truth of the message of God, when people are bringing forth the prophetic utterance of the Lord, and you start to open your mouth and you start to try and undercut that message, that's what I see. It is as if a person is standing and they're trying to stand so that they can deliver the message. And then other people keep coming and trying to kick their legs out from under them, keep trying to try and kick the person down and what they don't know is God has caused that person to stand in the earth. God has raised up that person, male or female, man, woman, or even children. God has commissioned to commission. Someone means that you have done an extensive research to look who is qualified to do this thing. I have a job that I need done. I need something painted. I'm going to look among the available painters. I'm going to look at their body of work. I'm going to look at the amount of experience that they have, or maybe lack of experience, but willing to learn. God is the one who takes his vessels through a vetting process. He is the one who selects the vessels as he chooses. And then he stands that person in a, in a certain country, in a certain part of the earth. And he says, I want you to carry forward this message for me. Some message have a lower tier, middle tier, very high tier, international tier. Those messages go out to the whole world. They involve nations. They involve Kings. They involve territories. Those messages even speak to principalities and powers that are sitting in the high heavens. God God can send a message through an earthly vessel to fallen angels that are sitting in the high heaven to tell them the eye of the Lord sees you and your day is coming. And yet here on earth with that kind of important spiritual agenda and spiritual 
powerful mission going on. Mere human beings that are made of flesh and blood will come up to that messenger and attempt to kick that person's legs out from under them so the person can fall because they think it's funny. They think it is funny to mock the message of God. And God is saying, while your laughter is in your throat, the judgment will come upon you suddenly. You will be taken away suddenly in the midst of your mockery, in the midst of what you think is so funny. God says, your life will be required of you. No second chance, no questions asked, no time to repent. This phrase, I was just joking. This phrase will be retired on earth. The things that God will do to people, they will think it is much too harsh a punishment. You can go blind for mockery. You can go blind. You can absolutely go blind for mocking at the messengers of God because these people are speaking by the holy unction of the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is motivating them. The voice of the righteous is crying out in this destitute earth because we have come into such dark days. It is dark and yet people cry out on the street corner falsely that it is yet light and even brighter times are coming. There's a total dichotomy between the true messengers of God and those who serve and follow Satan, those who serve falsehood to the people, all who believe false prophets, your faith will be destroyed by them. You won't even be able to keep faith alive for 10 minutes in the new system that is coming in the new system that is coming. I'm seeing that nuclear reactors are going to start to fail around the world. There's going to be such terrible nuclear tragedies, not even necessarily based on earthquakes or things like that. I just see the reactors are going to fail and I think they have some kind of water in them because I see something leaking inside and that leaking thing, it has a diamond reflective surface as if I know that diamonds don't melt, but it has a rainbow reflected hue on top of this liquid as if perhaps there's oil inside this liquid and it's very dangerous, dangerous, whatever this water is inside these reactors. Maybe they have pools inside the reactors or a tank or maybe a pool, a cooling pool, maybe something like that, maybe like a, a aquarium or something inside them. Anyway, that thing is going to crack, whatever it is. Maybe it is like a scuba divers tank that I see almost like a scuba diver. He carries one tank of oxygen on his back, two tanks of oxygen on his back, but that's air. But inside these reactors, there are tanks or something in there that contain liquids and they're going to crack and those liquids are going to leak out and we're going to have not nuclear scares, but nuclear disasters, terrible nuclear disasters are going to take place on the earth. And we will hear of these tragedies and people are going to get horrific sickness, radiation sickness and disfigurements and all kinds of sores on their bodies. And people will be so dangerous that even the humanitarian people will not be able to make a case all these special interest groups and these peacekeeping forces and these people, um, I don't know what they call them. We'll just generally call them international organizations, you know, aid organizations. They in good conscience, they are not going to be able. I hear the Lord say they won't be able to make a case that people should be left. People should be left in general society. I don't care how kind you are. You're not going to be able to make a case in good conscience that people who have been exposed to nuclear radiation should still be allowed to live with the mix of the population. The risk of contamination is off the charts. Those people are going to be quarantined. And I'm telling you, we are going into a world of quarantine for this and quarantine for that and a camp for this and a separate keeping area and holding cell for that. We're going into a world of separation, the haves and the have nots, the do and the do nots, the red, the blue, the yellow, the green, different tiers in society. You'll get your color and you'll stick to your level. You will stick to your area. That's what I'm seeing. They put you with the green. All right. They put you with the white. All right. You go with the purple. That's it. You go with the blue. That's it. You're going to be identified by a color. The color is going to determine your strata in society. 
And that's it. Once you get assigned there, that's it. That's where you work. That's where you marry. That's where you live. That's where you die. That's where everything is going to happen. Stratified community, of course, with the yellows, I should say, the gold, the saffron, the elites at the very top. People see your robes and they absolutely know, yes, mm -hmm, that's the ruling family. Oh yes, she's the eldest daughter of the leading clan of the elites. It's going to be like something directly out of these medieval books where you have the house of this and the house of that. And the Lord has given me this thing in the dream, but now he's bringing it up. He's bringing it out because I have not yet published that dream. He's bringing out the future of color, the clans, the separation, the stratification, the colors. I recently saw that world by the grace of God. And it's coming forth now that you, you don't get to choose your color. You will, you get assigned a place in society. And I'm telling you, I see people's hearts, the creativity, the joy, the will to live, just, just wilting inside them, just wilting inside them. People are so mistaken about how we are created and how we are made. And that is because our understanding, our ability to think has been killed by machines. The ability of the human being to think independently, to sit and really muse like the old ancient people used to really sit and ask themselves. They would write so many writings. What is the purpose of life? What is man's purpose upon the earth? Why have we been created? And then we started to get lost from that as science began to integrate more and more and more with us. And it began to usurp the need to think and know why we exist. And we have gotten so far away from our creator that all we want now is to do and and to have and to shop. We no longer think about who we are, but I'm telling you when technology is moved back to its proper place and people are told to take mandatory work walks and people are told to take mandatory bike rides and people are told go outside and sit in the park and, and be on the grass and feel nature and things like that. People's hearts will be removed from the ability to just be lost in staring at a screen and things like that. And what will happen is that people will then start to become much calmer. But once they realize I can't realize my dream. I want to paint. I want to be a runner. I'm no good at books, but I'm great at running, but we don't have any running in this society. We don't have sports. It's outlawed. It's not allowed. They don't want people to sweat because sweat gets, sweat gets you worked up and sweating gets you worked up and emotions get you worked up. They take that away. And I see people's hearts wilting inside them, just like little plants that are not getting enough sun and not getting enough air. People's will to be people's will to continue will be greatly affected greatly challenged in the society that is coming. And yet people are not putting their minds towards how to prep to preparations for moving into that future society. All they do is stand around like Psalms one, one says, and just mock and just laugh and just think that everything is a joke. And there are no jokes here. There is only the swiftly incoming judgment of God, like a rock coming to hit this planet. That is how the wrath of God is coming to hit this planet. And, but a precious few souls are taking the time to prepare in the presence of God. And it is a tragedy. It is a great tragedy. It is a great tragedy, but this is where we are now. Let me read something here. Let me read something, this message that I have repeated so many times, the scripture that I have repeated so many times for those who are wise to take it into their heart. It's one single verse here in the book of Revelation and it's Revelation 22 and verse 11. Let me start from verse 10. Verse 10 says, and he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And this is, yeah. you know, this is just so clear. It's saying that when it comes time, when you're too close to the time of prophetic fulfillment, God is not going to seal the prophecy anymore. I see people running around on the internet. Oh, you know, I've read this and I've read that. And have you read the book of this and the Mormon book and the book of the sealed portion? And I'm thinking, I'm busy reading my Bible. I don't eat strange food. 
I'm eating the food that is going to keep me strong in the days when things that are 40 feet higher than me are going to challenge me and try to take my life because they can see the spirit of God all over me. When giants stand in front of you to challenge you, I hope that the Mormon book and the sealed portion of Jedekiah are going to help you because some of us are packing bullets and we're not going to be afraid to use it when these 40 foot high, 30 foot high creatures come out. The sight of them will cause people's hearts to crack. Those people will be disqualified before the giant can even say fee fi fo fum. You put your eyes on a giant straight, straight into the quiet resting place you go. The kinds of challenges that are ahead, it is those who are packing scripture bullets in the chamber that are going to stand a chance. Those are the true. The Bible says that the whole earth is in waiting. The whole earth is groaning. And what is she waiting for? She is groaning because she's tired of the load that she's under and she's waiting for the revelation of the true sons of God. The true sons of God are going to be those who are going to fully stand up in their revealed and manifest Christ nature. The word of God in some people will literally cause them to glow up. You won't even be able to physically recognize a person because they will be literally radiating the light of the gospel. We are going to get a glimpse of the kind of biblical armor that people are walking around with. You're going to see a man on the street. He's going to be walking to wherever he's going. And yet you spiritually will be able to perceive the armor of God, the breastplate, the helmet, the belt, the sandals, the sword, the shield, you're going to be able to see that this person is fully weaponized. And those who go to Google to get information, if Google is the place where as soon as somebody says th things, you run to the internet to get informed, that's how you know. And then you don't even know how to research properly before you start talking. You just start talking with no basis, with no need. Who can help you? It's the people who have been storing up the word of God in them. Even if you've only been reading the Bible for six months, you are better off than someone who's been reading it for 30 years and has got the answers all jumbled up on the inside of them. When you get too close to the time of prophetic, prophetic fulfillment, then God says to the prophet, do not seal up this prophecy. That's why I don't keep things. The Lord is even always hastening me and telling me when I give you the word, bring it out. When I give you the word, bring it out because prophecy starts to even get a little stale. Some of them, they're so time sensitive. If you keep them for even two days, they start to feel like cereal that's been sitting and that's so soggy in the bowl. He's saying here to John, this part that I'm telling you here in Revelation 22, he's telling him, don't seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. And look at how many thousands, thousands of years ago that John received this revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, the one who is unjust, let him be unjust still. You're wicked. It's not likely that you're coming out of that wickedness now. Why? Because Satan is starting to stir his essence into the earth. Even as the Lord is re, 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 even as the Lord is releasing power to his people, even as God is releasing supernatural power to the saints who actually take being a saint seriously, who are not just talkers on social media. I'm going to blink and I'm not going to see the people who are mocking the prophecies. We're going to look for you. You're going to have a headstone. I will not have a headstone. I will still be here continuing in my commission because God told me that I'm going to see my prophecies to the very end, to the very end. And the things I prophesy about, I prophesy about the age of the return of the dragons. That is a while off yet. Something that the older people may not get to see because God says it will trouble their hearts to such an extent that their hearts will fail them. That the seeing, the coming of trolls, the coming of beasts, every horrible thing that we have seen in the movies will be walking 10 toes, 50 toes down on the street. These things are all going to come back. God told me, what you have prophesied, you will see it until the end. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried what people say wherever I post the videos, wherever I post these prophecies. I am not worried by the high level of conversation and controversy that is swirling around the word of God now because I know that the Lord has set me in the earth and no one is going to kick my legs out from under me. This is a born commission. This is a born commission. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is a born commission. Nobody asked me if I wanted to do it. My opinion was not sought. My parents were not asked. I was a created thing in the mind of God. And I have come now to fulfill what is written in God's book of me. And no one will be able to turn that back. 
You're doing wickedness now. You're sitting in the seat of the scoffer. You're walking in unjust and ungodly advice. You're standing in the way of sinners because of the closeness of the hour and because of the close game. Satan is playing such a close game at this time. Let us understand that on this line. Let us understand that we are playing with someone whose golf game is above the greatest golfer on earth. Name the sport. He's the best at it. He's better than all mortals because he is of the class of angels. The only way we can beat him is in the power of the cross, the risen King, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. It is in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. It is in the power of the blood, his precious and enormously costly sacrifice that we treat so commonplace. People don't even want to take communion at home. They act like they have to wait for the pastor to give it to them. And then he only gives it to them once or twice a year. And yet, yet he said, for as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. That is why we do it on this line. We do it on this line so that his presence can never become a faded memory among us here. You're unjust, you're wicked, you're pursuing pleasure. It is not likely that you will be able to extricate yourself from these things if you continue in them. That's why the scripture says, he who is unjust an unjust man is a man who hates justice. He hates righteousness. He hates to do good. The Bible says, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. So this is definitely usually referring to defilement of the body, masturbation, adultery, pedophilia, laying with animals, being a harlot, male and female, revealing clothing, revealing clothing. Your mind is taken over by filthy images in your habits, in your speech. Four letter words are the only way you can express yourself. The Bible says, let him stay in that state. So we are in a time where people preach for God so loved the world and that is not bad. But people preach a falsehood that God is still leaving the 99 to chase after the one. They are preaching that they can be unjust and Jesus is still going to run after them. They are preaching that they can stay filthy and he's still going to be looking for them. And that's not what the Bible is saying. We have come too close, Revelation 22 and 10 to the time to fulfill the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Therefore do not seal up the words of prophecy. We've come too close now to the time where God is playing for the crown. God is playing for the championship. God is playing to win. And whoever will not join the army of God, nobody is chasing you. Nobody is going to beg you to get saved. Nobody is going to beg you to put your clothes on and stop laying up with people you're not married with. You want to be filthy? The Bible says, let that person be filthy still, which means that when it's time for final roll call, that's how you're entering into eternity. Filthy, the Bible says. Unjust, the Bible says. That means unmerciful. That means unkind. That means disrespectful to parents. That means a glutton. That means a harlot. That means a prostitute. That means a user of pharmacia, sorcery, drugs, witchcraft, alcohol, abusing every known vice to man, drugs, flying overseas to Thailand so you can sleep with young girls because you know they will put you under the jail if you do it here and get caught. Grown men with pot bellies and toupees flying to so-called exotic destination to destroy People who haven't had their 11th birthday. And we can all see who they look like when they catch them. We can all see what countries they come from, can't we? Defilers, despoilers, unjust, filthy. God says you're going to stay in that condition because now the time to fulfill prophecy has come. And apparently you can't see the changing of the guard. You're still following unrighteous pastors. You can't see that the old is gone and that the new has come, that the new breed is up and walking around the earth, calling out a totally different trumpet note. It's not victory, victory. It's who is on the Lord's side. God is going to bring about a powerful and permanent separation. It's been prophesied here on this line before husband and wife, you will separate not because anyone's having an affair. You will separate because the spirit of God is going to cleave the two of you, the goat on the left and the sheep on the right. I prophesied it here in one of these old prayer calls. God will separate that couple. The goat will go to the hospital and not come out again. Some strange, who knows what 
the goat is going to end up in the ICU and then the doctor will come out and do that familiar head shake. We're so sorry. We did everything. And then sheep, you'll be on your own. You'll be crying, but you don't know that it was the father who set you free. People think that God is a toy. They think he's a sentimental old grandfather, senile, wearing glasses, and just, I love you, I love you. There's nothing like that. You are dealing with a warrior and a king that is coming back to set order. He is coming back to set order first in the church, and then he will deal with the world next. So let the unjust continue to be unjust and let the filthy continue to be filthy. And let me tell you who they're going to be separated from. He was righteous. Let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Filthy, you're not going to be able to come near the holy. Unjust, you're not going to be able to come near the righteous. There's going to come a powerful steel door separation between the two camps. Because this earth is getting lined up for the final battles that are going to take place on the foothills of Megiddo. And God doesn't have time for people who are still on the fence. He's been calling for long enough. Last call for the Ark of Noah. Last call to come into the Ark of Righteousness. And people are still out there playing with celebrities and acting a fool. So be it. Unjust. Filthy. Stay that way still. God is very powerful. But he will not go against anyone's free will. When he's been calling you and calling you and calling you. And you continue to value your life over the call to surrender that life. That life is not worth anything in eternal currency. Our lives are worth nothing until they have been saved. Has no one taught us this? The human life is worth nothing until it is put through the washer cycle of salvation. If you die outside the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, your life, all your accomplishments, the sum of who you are is zero. You do not matter. They will put you on the eternal scales when you stand before God, and it will be as if you're not even standing there. The thing won't even register one pound. It won't register one stone for those of you in the UK. It will not register one kg for those of you who are in um, different locations. It won't register a thing. It won't register anything. It will be as if you never existed. You can be the biggest philanthropist you want to be down here on the earth. God won't even recognize you. He won't even acknowledge you. And he will prove it when he says to you, depart from me. I never knew you. Imagine your name is on 300 hospitals down here, 400 orphanages. You fed half the entire earth. And then the Lord tells you, depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. What a waste of birthdays. What a waste of birth. That's where some people are heading and they seem to be okay with it. And I can tell you, the Bible says that God is okay with it too. Reckless love is a lie. The father is very strategic. He outthinks all of us on a massive scale. Don't get him, don't get him twisted. Don't get God confused with Santa. The two of them have nothing to do with one another. Mockery of the word of God is not allowed. It was never allowed in the scripture. God will not allow it in these end times. The Lord is the same. I am the Lord. I change not. You could not mock the servants of God. You could not mock the priests. You could not mock the apostles. You could not mock the, pres the prophets of God in the old days. You couldn't mock the kings. You couldn't even mock the servants who were directly serving in the king's request when he sent them out. When ancient kings sent out an advisor, when they sent out a vizier or a representative, nobody dared to say anything to that person. And not only that, they never interacted with the common people. A vizier from one kingdom would always come directly to David's court, to Hezekiah's court, to Solomon's court, and there they would converse with their contemporaries, vizier to vizier. King's general to King's general. But we're in the age of accessibility now and everybody's a critic. 
Be ready to stand up for the things that you have said. When the Lord calls you to account, you will account for every word, every syllable. Let me make it simple. Every breath. If you made a breath and there was sound in that breath, which meant or indicated that you had said something, you will account for that sound when you stand naked in your birthday suit, in your eternal body before the Lord and myself too. And the best part about it is that the majority of my words are recorded. I will have to stand up under them one way or another. I'm not going to delete them. They'll always be here until someone else takes them down because they can no longer be tolerated because of the new society that is coming. Every word. Let us think on that. Let us learn to bridle our tongues. The Bible says that power of life and death is in the tongue. Many people are going to receive death because they will not know when to keep quiet in the new world order, in the beast system. I see them already now. The Lord brings forth a word of caution and they're like, well, they're going to have to kill me with pleasure. You'll be one of the first to go. We'll all be watching you. In the first 10 seconds, there's going to be a mass wipeout. Mass wipeout. Those who don't know that silence is a virtue and that silence, the Bible says all through the book of Proverbs, it tells us, that the wise know how to bridle themselves. The wise know how to control themselves. The words of a wise man are few, but a prating fool. Prating means on and on and on to talk and talk and talk. And it's just like hot air and dust. A prating fool who can control. The Bible says that if you beat a fool to pound this person in a mortar and pestle, it says you can't get his foolishness out of him. And surely there must be a factory producing such people in the end times. Quite a few of them are being shipped here to the United States. That's for sure. James chapter 3. All about the power of the tongue, controlling the tongue. You preach this to people and they open their mouth as you have told them. That God says that there are those who cannot keep their mouth closed. They open their mouth immediately after the prophecy to say, but who, who's to say that our mouths should be closed? Keep it open. Keep it wide open. Open mouths, they not only catch flies in the end times, they'll catch bullets too. Revelation 22 and 15. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. This is the eternal city, New Jerusalem, the home of the just. Beautiful to see. But outside, this is verse 15, but outside, that means those who are not getting entry. Listen to who they are. They are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral the murderers, the idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Dogs are people who cannot accept scriptural doctrine. Whenever you hear about dogs, these are always people who will never accept anything to do with God, anything to do with Jesus Christ. Your standard issue atheist is what the Bible calls a dog those who mock at the word of God, those who try to be logicians and say, but how can this happen? And how is that supposed to happen? And you said this would happen. And now you said this would happen. So which one is it? Because it's giving inconsistency. Those are dogs. Those are dogs because when the food is served, you can't do anything but bark and howl in front of it. You're not fit to sit at the table and use a knife and fork like the children. Even the smallest youngest person in the kingdom of God who is only three weeks to the kingdom of God and still struggling to use his knife and fork properly to cut the word of God is better than a 15 year so-called apologist veteran that can quote you 10,000 verses in one minute and yet you gaze into the heart of that person and there's nothing just a barren wilderness with wind whistling across it nothing between the ears no faith does not truly believe in God the Bible is a textbook to him, but it is not a living thing. Dogs, sorcerers. This is both the ones who are practicing sorcery, witchcraft, black magic, occultism. 
people who use marine witchcraft, people who use ordinary witchcraft, white witchcraft, Wicca, tarot cards, your horoscope readers, all of you that do that. You use crystals, you use dowsing rods, you use all this arcane knowledge that has trickled down into human society as a result of what the fallen angels taught people when they came at the very first times and blended into, into our societies. It's you. It's you who are the sorcerers, but also the drug users. You hard drug users, recreational drug users, party drug users, you who are pushing drugs in the community, you are who are getting other people addicted, hyped up. You're killing people. Those who are on the high class, top quality opioids, those of you who steal the opioids from the medical system and you flood it into the street, all the pharmaceutical companies that are pumping people filled with death. This stuff is called pharmacia. Vaccine happy crowd, flattening the curve for who knows what. That's pharmacia. That's the sorcery, the sexual immoral. You can't keep your clothes on. Everything is a good time. If you're not having a good time with someone else, then you're having a good time with whatever you can charge and plug up at your house. God is watching you. You women that do this, God is watching you. They're going to find you cold in your homes. And, the, and you know what? It's bad enough to die, but what a shame to die and be found by your super in that position with that thing. You embarrass that old man like that if he has to call the cops, the cops will come. They have to take pictures of whatever it is. They need those pictures just so that nobody can say that it was foul play. Everybody's going to know who you are even in death. What a shame and embarrassment. The position that they're going to find sexually immoral people in, worms and maggots will eat you up while you're still alive. You've heard all these things. If you haven't, welcome to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog live prayer call. They will find you in conditions that your parents, when they come to the funeral home, your father, your father, your father's breaking heart to know that his little petal died no better than Jezebel the whore. It will be a heartbreaking thing. And it will not be coming out of the blue. It will be out of the blue for your parents. It will be out of the blue for your parents, young man. But it will not be out of the blue for anyone who is of spiritual understanding because we have come to the days when the fulfillment of the prophecy is near and the filthy are going to stay filthy. They will stay filthy. They will pass on into the outer realm filthy. Your final photograph, you hot girl summer that took all those pictures for the gram, it's going to be stark naked with some purchased thing next to you. And that's the choice that you made. The murderers, the idolaters, we all know what a murderer is, but the idolater is a hotly contested position. People have no idea how sick they are with the disease known as inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, liking something to the point where it's unhealthy. Trump people, Obama people, Biden people, politics lovers, Beyonce lovers, T.D. Jake supporters, people who are still defending R. Kelly when all the information about him is out in the open. The Swifties, all of you roaring your lungs out at the sports competition behind LeBron James and whoever else matters to you so much. These people don't know you. They don't think about you. You don't matter to them. You're just a coin. You're just a buck. You're just a vote for them to continue living their best life. But you actually think because of some words of affirmation that they give you through these cheap microphones, you think you matter to them. You don't matter to them. When they sit down, they don't think about you. The only time they ever think about you is when they count you as a dollar. But you don't care about that. You don't come to approach God in the right way. When you do come to approach God, he's offended because when he looks in you, all he can see is how much concern you have for Donald Trump. And you couldn't care less about the good works that the Bible says the Lord has prepared good works in advance for us to do. You couldn't care less. He's looking at all the good works that you don't even know that you're supposed to be active with. Why? Because every penny that you get is toward the next beehive group convention. You couldn't care less what God wants from you. You couldn't care less what your social responsibilities are in this world. 
You have no clue what to do with money. You're making it, but you don't know what it's for. Idolatry. To lift up anything in this earth above Jesus Christ. And who are you going to lie to? What is the practice of worship? Whose presence do we enter into when we worship? It's the presence of the Lord. So when you go into the presence of the Lord, who do you think is vetting you? Who do you think is speaking these words of how high idolatry is in the earth? Do you think it comes from a small apartment in Brooklyn? Do I have knowledge of all the hearts of this earth? What man even knows his own heart that is within him, except the spirit of the Lord that knows the internal parts of a man. The Lord knows the hearts when he alleges adultery. It's true. Even if your brain hasn't caught up to how it's true yet, when God says you're guilty, you're guilty. If God says there's a smell of idolatry in the camp, it's there. It doesn't need you to agree. It doesn't need you to have figured it out and say, oh, it's this thing that we do. Oh, it's that thing that I'm guilty of. He says it, you're guilty. Step into repentance posture. And as you humble yourself to repent, the revelation of what you've been doing will often be given to you so that your repentance can be genuine, but also accurate. But most of us won't bow the knee. If we don't see it, why should I repent? I'm not an idolater. I'm an American. I have the right to vote Republican or Democrat if I want. That's natural. That's not idolatry. And yet politics is an idol in this nation. If they were to tape most people in the month of November for a 24 hour period, political talk would come out of their mouth and probably just good morning, God in the morning and good night, God at night. And this is Christians I'm talking about, not the world. It's a terrifying and a pathetic situation to be in a swamp and think that you're on flat tarmac. It's very dangerous. The last group is whoever loves and practices a lie. There's literally no limit to this. This is actual liars. This is people who pretend to have things that they do not have. This is people who create an entire false life and put it forth on the internet, perpetrating to be one thing and then the next thing you know, they're on a CNN documentary because they're another thing. There's literally no limit on who practices a lie. Every person in the church walking around with faulty church doctrine, walking around with false expectations of rapture, next Shemitah, it's talking about you. What a shock. If you are walking in loving and practicing lies, even religious lies, you're guilty. How shocking to stand before the Lord and be called forth in the group of liars. And you're certain that you're a believer and yet your name is being called and you're trying to look around and see if there's another person in, in the judgment with your same name. And then the angel is making that helpful. No, no, no. It's you come forward, come forward movement with his angelic hand. Won't you faint? Won't you drop to the earth in anguish? To know that because you won't separate out of certain fallacies on earth, you fight for the fallacies. You fight for the fallacies as if the fallacies died on the cross to save you. Who can help you? Who can help you? If God himself is failing to break through to the hearts of people in this hour, then after death, who can help you? If you can hear, hear. If you are unjust, stay unjust. If you are filthy, stay filthy. If you are righteous, make sure that you fight with all you have to stay righteous. And if you are holy, pray every single day and ask the Lord to continue to consecrate you, that you may remain holy until his inevitable return. This is Celestial and this is the Master's voice. Father, we thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for this time. Um, we never know what it will be, Lord, when we come before you. Amen. We never know Amen. what it will be when we come in your holy presence. We just know that you are always present. You always join us, Lord God, at the beginning, sometimes at the end, in the middle. And we thank you for sensitivity to always shift when we can hear your voice. We are the ones who are privileged to be able to have access to you, to be able to suddenly be led to scriptures that can be opened up for the edification of our hearts and occasionally shared with a larger audience that 
all your people in all the territories, every person with a heart to listen and learn, not from man, but from the Holy Spirit. There's blessing in it. Yeah, we worship you. We glorify you. And we take your word seriously for as you have said in Revelation 22 and 10, the words of prophecy are not sealed anymore because the time for the fulfillment of this book is at hand. <clears throat> in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, soaking this prayer in the blood of Jesus and sealing up this time of revelation with Jesus Christ, that it may not be interfered with, that it may not be broken into. We store it up as a treasure in heaven with you, Yah, where the moth and the rust cannot destroy it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.